All right, so what's up, everyone? I figured I'd talk about a different topic other than freedom. Um, so first of all, you must accept yourself before you can accept anyone else. Um, so, but then you can love other people too, but it has to be yourself, as selfish as it seems. Although I do love myself, but I care more about other people than myself. You know, I put other needs before mine, you know. So, you have to be in constant communication with your partner, okay? So, in order for the relationship to work. Now, I've always been single. Like, I've never had a girlfriend ever in my life. But I do know from my, um, you know, my relationship with my brother, and my mother, we always talk about and communicate. So you have to be in communication with your lover and your person that you love in order for the, you to accept them for who they are, regardless. That's the part of the negotiation, part of a relationship. Is you have to, hello, is that you have to negotiate between each other, each other, in order for the relationship to work. If you don't communicate precisely your feelings and your actions to them, it doesn't have to use big words. You just have to communicate it in the right way that they understand. Hello. Um, then I think the relationship has more of a probability for it to work. You have to communicate your feelings. That's what um, um, empathy is, feelings for other people. And I understand there are different people that are really different and have different cultures and things like that. So I'm going to use blessing in a non-religious way, not to offend anyone. I feel blessed for the person that I am today because I care enough about other people to help them out. And the blessing that is um, to help out others, you know, to care about other people. Because that's how I've always been. You know, I always accept people for who they are, no matter what color, what race, whatever they are. They are who they are, it's regardless of what they believe or don't believe. You know. So, love has to be between you and your partner. You have to be constant in negotiation. Um. But don't let your partner. Blame you for things you've never done, okay? Have them take responsibility if they did something to you. You know, like kind of like narcissists who blame on you, but they never take responsibility for themselves. So tell them that they have to take responsibility for their actions in order to get better for themselves. You know, they can't continue to blame you for something that they did. You have to help them out. Once they admit that they've done something wrong and they said they're sincerely sorry for what they did, then you can help them out in the process of rebuilding a new person or a better person that is. You know, that's why you get up every day to bless them. So um, you can get up and start a new, a new day, a new beginning, kind of, in a way. And, um, so that's what I do. I look forward to getting up every day and talking about this, talking about that. But the most important thing I've gotten out of life is helping people. Even though I have a disability, cerebral palsy, and I can't help but work, and I do have hearing aid right here and glasses, I'm still willing to help people no matter what because I care. And um, so yeah, I don't use my disability as, as an advantage or a disadvantage, you know. I want to inspire other people to be the best versions of themselves that they can be. But other than that, I leave them be, leave them alone, you know. So patience is, is something that, um, is something that I built up over the years, you know patient waiting for things, you know, um, 
Some people can be impatient, some not all. Some smaller percentage, you know, have to get this right away or that right away. But uh, I, I know that throughout humanity, the human history, there's been a lot of tragedies. But I always seem to think of the positive side of humanity, despite all that. You know, I, I always try to see the good no matter how bad things have gotten in the past, you know. So, um, so I always try to see the good in like what Christians do or um, atheists or whatever group of people, you know, and try not to lump them all in, in the one group. You know, blacks in this group, Jews in this group, Christians in that group. I judge them by their actions, not by what group or what race they belong to, but by their actions, their individual actions, not by their collective group of who they belong to. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of great people out there, no matter the color, race, ethnicity, nationality. There's a lot of wonderful people that are doing great things for freedom and liberty and so many other things. Greetings. Wow, Brazil. Thanks for uh, stopping in and uh, uh, tuning in from Brazil. I appreciate it. Um, so, I mean, there, there's a lot of wonderful people doing a lot of great things here in America, South America, Canada, all over the world for freedom and liberty, you know. Um, I've, I've had a lot of great black friends, Christian friends who are Christians, you know, a lot of friends who are black, who are really great people, hang out with them, had no problem with them, you know, so. Always judge by actions, not by, not by what their race is or what group they belong to but by individual actions separate from the race or what they look like. So, um, and there's a lot of awesome black people, there's a lot of awesome all, all different kinds of people. A lot of different ways in this street. Of course, there's always going to be bad, there's going to be no perfect utopia in the world. Um, but, you know, I try to tell women all the time that, um, I wish they, I wish more of them would get guns. I have no, um, no necessary need for a gun, but you know, I'm not going to take anyone else's rights away from getting a, getting a gun and defending themselves. I absolutely 100% believe in defending yourself uh, with a gun, you know, so civilian, you know, so. I have no problem with other people getting guns. I'm not stopping anyone from getting a gun. I'm not the one writing legislation. I'm not the one restricting anyone. It's those in power that are manipulating some of the masses in the thinking to give up the guns, which I absolutely do not recommend doing ever. That's why the Second Amendment was written due to to throw off tyrants and tyranny in the government, not to hunt. So, America, please do not ever turn in the gun. You need them. For whatever reason, when that time comes. I'm not saying it's now or tomorrow or next week. But please do not ever turn in the gun. To anyone. I don't care if they're FBI, CIA, or your local sheriff. Your guns are yours. And they will always be yours. They are your human rights. And they are your, if you want to call it also, if you want to call it your God-given right, you want to call it that, call it that too, to have one. And as a constitutional right, the Second Amendment. It is your right to have an owner gun. No one, not me, President, Vice President, anyone in Congress, Senate, your local city council man, they, no one anywhere in the world can tell you to give your guns away. You keep them at all costs. I am not calling for a civil war. 
I do not want a civil war whatsoever. I want love and acceptance of all people to reign supreme. I want all people to have the same human right, you know, the right to be left alone and not be bothered if they're not harming or hurting anyone. Yes, absolutely. So that means white, black, Christian, Jews, Muslims, don't, everyone, no matter your race, is missing nationality, your, your gender. Everyone should be who they want to be. But if they're offending upon your rights and they're, they're doing something to you that is harming you in some way, then you have to defend yourself. Do not let anyone bully you into giving up your rights or your, or your freedom. That you are worthy of keeping and uh, are worthy of having. So, acceptance is sometimes can always be the easiest thing to love. Again, it's not always the easiest thing to find a person that will love and accept you, but it does happen. And it, it's real. It's not easy, you know, that are compatible with you. But um, it does happen. So, no matter your race, it's not to know your nationality, your gender, you know, you are allowed to be yourself. And I will leave you alone. When I go to bed at night, you lay my, lay my head in the pillow. I think of all the people who are fighting for freedom, or at least trying to do better for that day and for myself. You know, I think of everyone just being left alone in the world in peace. Of course, it's not in peace, but it's daydreaming of the world being in peace and at, at, at ease without government, without any form of authority in charge, you know. Monarchy means ruled by one. Anarchy just means ruled by ruled by no one. Ruled by one. Anarchy means ruled by no one. So it just all it means is there's no rule at the top. It's just people in in society. That's it. Doesn't mean there's no organization. Doesn't mean there's no businesses, roads, technology. You still would have that, you just wouldn't have authority on the throne, that's it. You, you still have problems to solve, roads to be built, businesses to be open up, jobs, everything else, there just wouldn't be authority and on the throne to admire and look at, that's it. That's the only difference. So, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I do, uh, I do accept that people have different views about different things and different opinions, and I, and I totally respect that they have their opinion, and I never would suggest censorship of people who have different opinions and different viewpoints, you know, all are accepted and are viable, you know, even if I don't agree 100%, you know, so. Even if I don't agree 100% with somebody's views or, or anything, just the other way to say it. Justin, I understand what you're saying, man. I'm, I'm glad you you shared your opinion. You, you have a right to it. I just don't, I just personally, I understand where you come up from. I just don't want to see anyone die in war anymore. I, I'm just, I'm just sick of war, and I, I don't want anyone to die anymore. I want them all to come home. You know, I've been anti-war for since for 12 years, so I'd rather them be home than overseas. You know, but I understand what you're saying, so. You know, so, um, I was anti-war, pro-peace, so peace is always at the center stage of my mind. 
And um, so anyway, love in relationship, it must be continuous and it must be negotiation, constant negotiation, conversations, and you're going to have disagreements nevertheless in relationships. But you must find out the, the kinks and everything else within the relationship, what you guys agree on, and what you guys don't, what you guys don't agree with, you guys can fix those problems later on. I agree, Justin. I agree. There's there are words that I morally oppose and I morally disagree with. You know, so I'm I'm I oppose the words because I don't want anyone to die. You know, I'm a non-intervention, meaning I don't want the words for America to be in. You know, I want the world to be fixed. The homeless to be taken care of and that kind of thing. Kind of like what you, what you talked about, Justin, the other time that you told me that um, you wanted to help out the homeless and stuff. I, I want to do the exact same thing. Take care of the homeless, you know. Take the money. Pull in a favor. Pull in aid and bring it here in America, spend it on infrastructure and stuff. So, um, acceptance is, isn't always, you ain't always going to accept everyone all at one time, you know, first impressions and everything. Maybe you're a little intimidated by them, you know, there, I don't know, there may be people that may be intimidated by me, I don't know. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, I don't know, I never, I never, met anyone that was. I'd never met anyone that could be. Maybe there was, I don't know, but I I have no attention to harming anyone or doing anything bad. I just want to improve the world and make it better. You know, that's what I've been trying to do for the last almost six years that I've been a volunteer is improve the world and make it more loving, more accepting, and more more caring, because I care. So, um, extremely care. I think I care way too much, more than I want to admit. Yes, I agree, Justin. I totally 100% agree with that. Everyone should be treated equally. And fairly, fair and square. Equally and fairly. You know, no, no uh, bias or discrimination against such, you know. Equally meaning not as a equal outcome, but equal opportunity. You know, if a man wants to do this job, a woman should also be able to do this job too if she chooses to do so. I'm not saying she should or, or can't, but if she chooses to do a job as the male can do the job, then they both should have the equal say in, in according to how they want to do the job. You know, they both should have an equal shot at the, the same position but different areas of whatever job that they are in. like the same shop but different areas in the shop or factory, you know, but doing the same position just in different areas of the shop or factory. Both males and females should have an equal opportunity at the same position at a factory if the female chooses to not get pregnant and feels like doing the job that the male is already doing. So um, that is the type of equality that I that I believe in. I don't know. I don't know if it's the equality that everyone else believes in, but I believe that 
a five order McDonald's and I want a cheeseburger, a double cheeseburger, I think the female should also be able to go to McDonald's and get that same cheeseburger. She should have the equal right to get the same cheeseburger that I do, or a different one. Which is exactly what I was saying. Yes, yes, Justin. Which is exactly what I was trying to trying to do, trying to say. Except for I was saying a little different. So acceptance is uh, to me, honestly, is accepting someone for who they are, not for their race, to to the city, nationality the gender, but who they are as a whole, whole person from head to toe, accepting them wholly, the whole person, no matter what. You know, if you love them and you care about them, you're going to accept them for who they are no matter what, if you truly love them and care about them. You wouldn't treat them like crap if you truly do love them. People who are narcissists and abusers, they pretend to care about you and love you, but they treat you like crap, and that's not love if they treat you like crap and abuse you. People who love you and care about you do not abuse you. They tell you how much they love you, they tell you how much they care about you, and they want the best for you. People who want the best for you, who love you and care about you, do not treat you like crap and abuse you especially if it spirals out of control. That goes for both male and female. While they're predominantly male, because the male tend to be the stronger of the two genders. However, that doesn't mean that the female can't also be abusive either. But it's more predominantly, at least from what I've seen the evidence in the studies, that it's the male that's prone to be more abusive and, and dominant. But I don't exclude women from being abusive either. I'm just saying I wish both male and female would just try to get along. I'm not saying they should get along. I'm not saying they will get along. I said try to try the best they can to get along, you know. So um, they can just try their very best to get along no matter what. So um, that, that is, um, I view it equal op equality, equal opportunity, you know. For those who just pop, popped in or tuned in, I, I was explaining quality earlier, but, you know, if I go to McDonald's and I get a double cheeseburger, I think a woman should also have the equal opportunity to go to McDonald's to get a double cheeseburger too. You know, I think we both, both genders should have an equal, time, equal opportunity to get the same cheeseburger as the other sex can. Same thing with a job. If a male can work at a factory, I think a woman should be able to work at a factory. If a male can work at a job at a desk, a female should be able to work at a job at a desk that she feels the need to. You know? So, um, um, so, I want to give a little bit of my uh, experience on depression and how I can help some of you guys out. So, from from like 2014 to 2018, 17. 2013, 2017, I suffered four years of depression. And um, 
how I got over other probably probably if I never would have done it. I got over my own depression by medication. Now I never recommend to anyone else medication as the first resort. You can choose how you want to get over your own depression or anxiety. I would never I not I I I take a medication because it's prescribed by my doctor. Not because I like taking medication or because I want to take the medication, but it helps. But I have been looking into healthier alternatives like CBD oil and, and cannabis for anxiety and depression. I have been looking in a lot of those. But what did help me to get out of depression was medication. But if I were to recommend somebody who had depression and or anxiety, it would be natural substances, stuff when they do for not prescription drugs. Again, I only take it because it's prescribed by a physician, my doctor. I don't take it because I like taking it or I want to take it. I only take it because it's prescribed. Otherwise, if I wasn't diagnosed with depression and anxiety, I would never would have taken the medications to begin with. So I don't like taking the medication. I don't want to take them, but I take them because they help me. Now, now if somebody else were to take the same medication, I don't know if it would help them as much as it would help me. However, the past week or two, I have been looking into safer alternatives and safer methods. But I don't know about what Michigan has as far as CBD oil or, or I know they legalize marijuana, but I don't know enough about what, I'm, I'm an anarchist, so I don't want to care about laws, but you know. The, the, the reward is great as far as CBD oil, but the risk is not. So that's how I calculate the vast majority of my stuff that I do. 99% of the thing is risk and reward. Is the risk worth the reward? If the risk is not worth the reward of being in a cage locked up, then it doesn't matter about the reward. The reward can be 100% grateful. I mean, 100% better. And I'm still not going to risk anything. You know, I'm an animal because I don't care about laws. But still, you know, you have to comply at some point. Because still the vast majority of statists, you know, the ones who believe in government, are still going to rat, rat and tattle to you on you anyway. So I am not going to risk anything as a person who loves freedom to be locked away where, where I could have just kept doing the right thing and, and freed everyone in the process in their mind up here. So um, the best way that I can um, help you guys out with depression as far as experience is um, find a therapist, find a a uh, doctor, find a parent, find a friend, find a best friend. Find somebody you can trust to tell you your feelings and opinions. Talk to somebody if you don't feel okay. Please. I'm telling you, talk to somebody, listen to music, do whatever you can to not push yourself over the edge. Talk to somebody so you know you're safe between you and them. You're not going to have to worry about anything happening, okay? And with anxiety, again, anxiety is not that easy to explain and try to understand playing in like five, ten minutes. Um, try to calm yourself, your mind, and yourself 
and take deep breaths. And if, if you take any certain type of something that helps, not prescription drugs, but natural substances and stuff in nature, take that and then slowly count it count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. And then deep breath, deep breath, and then ease your mind, and then you should be okay. Like when you feel your heart going a little mile an hour, that's, that I'm not a heart surgeon, but it's likely because of your anxiety and your fight or flight response. This is the reason why it feels like you're having a heart attack. Or it could be get uh, acid reflux, you know, coming up in the heart burn. That's acid reflux. If you, if you feel your heart going fast, that's because you will fly a flight response. And that's because of, I can't remember the, I can't pronounce the part of your brain that does it. But it starts with an A. The, the amplicata or whatever, however you pronounce it. But you know, it's like up, up here in your brain. And it's the fight or flight response that gets active during a panic attack. And uh, that's what happens. It's the fight or flight response gets on, turned on. And that's what causes the panic attack to go into full blown panic. And you're going to have to take something in order to calm it down. Or listen to music or whatever you gotta do. So I don't have, um, I don't have, um, you know, little sadness, mild, matter. I have severe depression for four long years, and um, but yet I still wake up with the blessings and gratitude that I'm alive, that I can affect change, even if I'm one person. And make the world better, you know, for everyone, and leave everyone alone. You know, even if all the difficulty and the things that I struggle with, and help other people with things they struggle with. I'm, I'm more in tune with helping other people rather than myself. I don't worry about myself or anything else. You know, so I care about caring about others and taking care of their problems and solving those rather than solving my own. That's why I help other people to help me solve my own problems rather than me solving my own. So if I were to recommend anyone from anyone um, fixing depression and anxiety my first recommendation is not ever and will not ever be prescription drugs. I want the war on drugs to end forever for that reason because I don't want people to die of the opiates at all. Never again. Not today, not tonight, not tomorrow, not next week, not next year. I want it to end forever because I don't want people to die. I want people to have more choices. I want people to have more healthier decisions. Or, I mean, sorry, have healthier options, not decisions. Healthier options, and then they can decide what they want to put in their body. My dream in the future is to where people who are addicts are no longer thrown in prison cells, but instead, either talking to a therapist or in rehab instead of jail cell. You know, a, a, a more peaceful, positive step forward as, as opposed to more, um, I don't know how to pronounce, I don't know how to phrase it, as opposed to a more violent, not really violent, but more inhumane choice. As far as jail, inhumane. I mean, I mean, 
that it's not okay to lock people up in a cell for a mistake they may have done or because they, they put the wrong client in their own body that they own. You know, if government says that I actually is illegal, they're essentially saying that they have a higher claim over your own body. Let me repeat that again. If government says X is illegal, they 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 claim they have a higher claim over your own body than you than you. They claim they claim that they have a higher claim of ownership over you in your body than you do. And it's not okay, it's not right. And they don't own your body. They pretend they do. They say they do, but they don't. But the only reason why they can say that and get away with it is because people believe that they are legitimate. And they imagine that government is, is the supreme law of the universe. The supreme law of the land. Whatever that means. I'm not talking about any of you guys, I'm talking about the people out there, you know, that still vote and still um, think that it's more or less fun. Yes, exactly. Exactly, Justin. You're correct. So with that being said, love and acceptance means loving and accepting people as a whole. Again, the person is not an easy subject to talk about, especially somebody like myself who suffered from it severely for four years before getting any help. And anxiety, severe anxiety. And I do what I can to help out others. Again, everyone, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Peace out. Love, peace, freedom, and everything else for everyone else. Bye now.